You probably heard that Dave Ramsey is 100% opposed to credit cards. Here's what he has to say on this. People get credit cards for mainly one reason. So they can buy crap they don't have the money to buy. In Ramsey's view, a responsible use of credit cards does not exist. Personal finance is 80% behavior. Credit card companies know this. Uh, at some point, the average person playing your game ends up with a credit card balance. Even when people point out that they pay off their balances each month in full, that doesn't bother him a bit. Even other things like cashback, travel points and other benefits don't make a dent in his conviction. So let's take a deep dive into what Dave Ramsey says on cards and whether it makes sense. The goal of this video is not to trash Dave Ramsey, but rather understand where he's coming from. After all, he has helped millions of people to get out of debt and live worry-free financial life. 82% of people in the US use credit cards. Middle and upper income families use them most, while lower income ones the least. Here's some stats on the aggregate credit card and other revolving debt balance over the years. While the balance dipped post-COVID, the upward march continued. Although, to be fair, the credit card balance naturally grows with the US economy too. The average credit card balance as of 2023 was $6,500. But why exactly does Dave Ramsey hate credit cards so much? Here are a few of his arguments. The most important point against credit cards is that people cannot control their spending. It could be especially true for Ramsey's core audience. Many people come to him for advice with a myriad of financial problems, including debt. And what all the studies are showing us is that when that's happening, that you spend more on plastic than you do with cash. And I mean, generally, it's true that credit cards can lead to overspending. If you don't use credit, then you cannot spend more than what you have. But with credit, you can potentially spend more than your monthly income or even savings. I mean, the temptations are there for sure. Dave Ramsey correctly reasons that overspending can lead to credit card trap. As of the last reading, the interest charged on cards was about 22%. The interest can add up and lead to a debt spiral. I personally knew a few people who fell into this trap. It always starts with a few emergencies or a temporary loss of income. As the balance started creeping up, the card charges overtook their life. Credit card companies make money by charging interest and swipe fees. Swipe fees are something that consumers do not pay directly. It is the merchants who foot the bill. But direct interest on consumer cards is the primary source of income for banks. So these corporations have all the incentives in the world to make people carry balances. Banks have huge marketing budgets and dangle many benefits to get you hooked. Okay, that's fine. But what if you're someone who used credit cards responsibly and pay off balance each month? You will get the same answer from Dave. Don't. Ramsey and his partners often cite frightening stats, like 47% of those with credit cards in 2023 did not pay their balance in full each month. In other words, these unfortunate ones paid interest. Ramsey says that the odds are not in your favor and not worth the risk. Mm, I, I don't know. What if I am part of 53% who pays off my balance each month? Am I potentially in trouble too? I think it all comes down to behavior and habits. If I am someone with a high degree of self-control, credit cards could be okay, right? The biggest benefit of using credit cards these days comes down to rewards and cash back. Depending on a credit card, it could be up to 2% with no annual fees. Some cards offer rotating categories with 5% cash back. Of course, there are also travel cards that let you book free flights with points. Most people love those rewards and use them often. But not for Dave. But to be fair, there are debit cards which provide cashback rewards. They may be not as generous as with their credit cards, but they're still there. And Dave Ramsey's typical argument against uh, these cashback rewards is that they're too small to make a difference in creating wealth. He often says that wealthy people did not get rich because they used credit cards and their rewards points. I mean, yeah, that's true, but what does this argument have to do anything with credit cards? I mean, credit card is just another tool that lets you generate savings or get into trouble. 
Clearly it has costs and benefits and just depends on the person and his spending habits. And there's this another question that often pops up during Ramsey's show and it is how on earth do you build credit history and get a mortgage if you don't use credit cards and don't build your credit history? And the Dave's answer is yes, you can. You can do so through so-called manual underwriting. Of course, you can get IELTS eyes rolled when you go to big banks branches, but smaller mortgage companies can qualify you. You just have to search. I haven't done it, so I don't know how difficult it is. Potentially, you may have to jump through some extra hoops to qualify, but it is possible. Many credit companies are doing their own customer scoring without FICO. They use models that have various inputs. These include rent or bill payment history, employment, and salary, among other things. Finally, there are debit cards. This is what Dave Ramsey advocates using. Debit cards will force you to stick to your budget and not rely on credit. Debit cards are accepted pretty much any Anywhere where credit cards are. If issued by Visa or MasterCard, debit cards do protect against fraudulent transactions. Some debit cards can even come with a rewards programs, though they are not as attractive and versatile as credit cards. But there are few limitations and annoyances with debit cards. First is car rental. Most top or major car rental companies accept debit cards these days, but there are some that won't, especially if you travel outside of the United States to some smaller towns, you won't see debit cards used much, or even if they accept debit cards, expect that there will be some soft credit check on you at the counter to make sure that you're not some delinquent. And also the hold on funds on your debit card can be higher compared to, say, credit cards. But the biggest drawback with debit cards is the lack of car rental insurance. To my best of knowledge, there are no consumer debit cards that provide primary car rental insurance. True, if you have an insurance on your personal vehicle, you may get coverage by extension on a car rentals. But it only works in the US and Canada, so if you travel outside of North America, you are out of luck. Conversely, many credit cards provide car rental insurance, especially primary ones, by default. Second is fraud. True, banks will reimburse you for fraudulent transactions on debit cards. But while you wait, you may have to deal with a drained checking account. And that's a major inconvenience. There are other things such as purchase warranties and travel insurance. More recently, you can find debit cards that come along with these perks, but not all. Conversely, many credit cards come by default with these benefits. We may argue with Dave Ramsey, but he seems to be right on credit cards as especially for people who have problems with controlling their spending. It can turn destructive very fast. And conversely, we can argue the opposite. If you are paying your balances in full each month and you don't have spending problems, you can take advantage of these cashbacks, benefits and other things that credit cards provide. It all comes down to personal decision. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal finance and other economic topics.